What up to the one up gaming? They're not really ready for this one. One up gaming is behind me. Let me get in beast mode. If you wanna try me, you don't need a cheat code. Kante is who I be to you. It's Mr. Hero, legendary adversary. Flows considered lethal. I'm a super saiyan. I got dragon balls. I wouldn't lie. You might think I'm playing when I'm saying I can really fly. When I'm on the track, you feel the energy I'm pushing. I put me on the map. One up gaming's who I'm talking about. I'm the rapping master chief. Epic to say the least Contain the hero Better etch that in your memory And so the one up gaming for the show I'll contain the hero Is really gonna show up Hi, David here, One Up Gaming. Going to have a quick go through this week's show, so 384 of this week's podcast. Um, yeah, uh, I'll, uh, I'll try and talk properly. This is just going to be a really quick show. Going to have the games played this week and the 10 minutes of nothing. So, without further ado, we'll go straight into the fact that we're sponsored, as always, by Games Inspired Music. 20% of each sale will go to the Charles Player Charity. And you can also buy our um, audio book. That's not an audio book. You can also buy our first 100 podcasts, and that's available at audiobooksontape.com. And a pound of each sale will go to the Diabetes UK charity. So that's pretty cool of that. So as I say, this is going to be episode 384. So we're getting up there. We're, getting, we're almost up to 400. I don't know what I'm going to do for episode 400. I'll, I'll see what happens. Um, and I guess I'll just go straight into the games played this week. So <clears throat> run the intro, Mr. Editor, please. Hi, I'm Lucy James, and I listen to the One Up Gaming podcast. Hello, Andy. This is Colin. I won't be able to get in there. No, 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 no. I'm sweating, no. David, One Up Gaming, episode 384 of the One Up Gaming podcast. So this is the games played this week section of the show. And so first of all, we played Robocop. Now everyone's thinking, ooh, Robocop, Rogue City, absolutely amazing. Yes, but no, we played the PlayStation 2 version of Robocop. It is really bad, really, really bad. Um, graphically for the time it was adequate not great but it was adequate um, it's a first person shooter it's got the targets, it's got the little crosshairs it's got all the little heat vision things it's got everything that you need it just doesn't have the feel and the heft of what the new version has and it was just not very good yeah, yeah, not great. So this week I, I, I did play a lot of PlayStation 2 games. So following on from that we have Outrun 2, 2006, Coast to Coast. So I think this is like the updated sort of version <coughs> of Outrun 2. Um, still looks amazing, still plays amazing. It's just got like the full Outrun 2 game in there. And it's also got like a whole load of other stages and levels and cars and models and everything. So <clears throat> I believe this is the version 2 get. And I will say it is Sega at their absolute finest. It looks amazing, it plays amazing, music's so good, the feel of the game's great. It is just an absolute top notch arcade racer experience. It's not a racing game. It's more of a, it's just like a, a time trial, clock to clock, 
so I think there is cars to go past but it's not like a racing on a circuit sort of game it is a bloody good game though and I really really recommend any of I mean like where Sega where's the Outrun 3 we really need another update to the Outrun games because the Outrun games were amazing um, moving on I watched the movie Blade 2 uh, with my wife um, not too long ago now and I thought Do you know what I think I've got Blade 2 on the PlayStation 2 so I loaded it up started playing it it's one of those games that I don't know how early it was in the PlayStation 2 life cycle but it, you can tell it's a PlayStation 1 game with the PlayStation 2 rendering techniques and more detailed background backgrounds so it plays very much like a PlayStation 1 game high resed up with more detail so it uses the tank sort of controls so not like the modern third person action games where I thought all PlayStation 2 games would have gone this way but I guess Tomb Raider was massive and a lot of people were still thinking to create games in that mold so it just didn't play very well the shooting is not great the graphics aren't great it's not a very good game so it's probably better than Robocop maybe not the budget of the game because I think Robocop looks and pl sort of like feels more like a PlayStation 2 sort of game from the ground up whereas Blade 2 is a PS1 game migrated over to PS2 to try and sell some and it was just not the best but yeah I mean what are you gonna do what are you going to do now the next game that I've got um, it's called Project Astra Dominium 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 yeah that sounds right and I believe it's a top down strategy sort of game uh, tower defense you place your little towers and you have to try and stop the enemies attacking the base basically and it's not a bad little game it's just not the best so unfortunately it's um, yeah it just didn't hit it for me it's, it's alright for me it's a, like a mobile sort of game load up on your mobile free to play click a couple of buttons watch it but to sit there and play on a PC it's just not graphically it's not there uh, gameplay it's a bit simple and a bit budget graphically it leaves a lot to be desired it's not the best but you know it's yeah it's it, yeah it's just not very good sorry sorry guys so we'll move swiftly on to probably one of the better games played this week and that was again PlayStation 2 to the rescue Auto Modelista and this is a racing game, a proper full driving racing game from Capcom I believe it was I'm thinking Capcom and it feels and handles quite well for a, a, a PS2 sort of game and they went all out batshit crazy with the graphics full um, trying to burp on camera uh, full sort of like cartoony style really primary colours it looks amazing it plays really well it's a great game and I think a lot of the people that bought this originally bought it because it looked like a kiddie game but it's really hard or the people that thought it was a kiddie game didn't buy it because they wanted a more realistic sort of game which this is more sort of like there it's really good it's in the concept of hindsight this is an amazing an amazing game and it's a great great game um, so yeah I would easily recommend Auto Model Easter so the next game we played this week is Nobody Sleeps Tonight and this one is a first person walking simulator sort of thing like first person shootery sort of thing 
very budget, very cheaply made, and it is just a bad, bad game. It looks like it's one of those, like, um, game maker engines, um, very cheap, very bad. So I'm not really going to go into it, it's just like, walk to this point, click a button, then go to the next point, click a button, while you're trying to avoid the, the monster's uh, dark, sort of like, backgrounds and dark interiors and things like that. So, yeah, not the best. Next up, we have Gargoyles Remastered. So, Gargoyles, the TV series, the cartoon, when I was a kid, was amazing. But, I never played the game. And, I've played this one, and I couldn't get off the first level. I'm stumped. I am completely stupid. I don't know how to play it. Um, I should have maybe just Googled it, or YouTubed it, or whatever. But, I just played it for 20 minutes. Changed it to the original setting, original graphic style, and it looks nice. And then you change it to the remastered sort of style at a click of a button, and it looks like, um, how do you say, like a, a mobile sort of like HD sort of game. 2D side scrolling platformer in the mold of all the other like Disney games, so like the Aladdins, the Lion King, all those sort of things. So, really good. Art, really good animation, but those sort of play second fiddle to how the gameplay feels. So I mean, like, like Lion King played well, Aladdin played amazing, but then like sort of like the Pog Hunter sort of, the the more that you got into it, they went really for the graphics and the style rather than the actual gameplay. And unfortunately, this one I think's more of the style and the graphics rather than the gameplay. So, next up, we have The Light in the Darkness. And this one is a 3D, kind of like a point-and-click, sort of story-driven game. Very cutesy-style graphics, considering it's set in 1941-1942, at the dawn of the Second World War. You're, uh, I'm going to say, a Jewish family. And I can't remember if you lived in Germany or if you live in, like, the outs sort of like Polandish sort of you know like the areas around where um you own a shop and you're like a little kid and it's very slow but I would have a guess because I only played it for like 10, 15, well, like 20 minutes, half an hour and it seems as though like you're playing the game and then you were like it's like written text it's not even like spoken text and you can like get things that are happening with your parents about the war that's happening um how things are going and it just seems as though in the grand scheme of things after a while it will start to pay off with the the background story the i never guess the war comes more into it more prominent and there'll be like death and loss and all that kind of stuff and it could move into a good sort of story but from what I played, it was too slow to get into, and that's the only downside I had of that. Very slow movement, very slow um, narrative. Um, but yeah, other than that, if you're interested in these sort of games about the war, um, people's loss, the hope, abandonment, all this kind of stuff, give it a go. The Light in the Darkness. And the last proper game that I played this week was... Premier Manager 09. Now this is the last Premier Manager game that I've played and I will say it plays very much like I can't remember when it changed over to this sort of format but it's been like this exact same game for like four or five years now. Uh, they just updated the stats and the players things like that. Um, graphically it's basically the same. Gameplay is the same. I still think out of all the Premier Manager games on the PC, I think it was number two or number three that was the best. It was really good. And then the kinda, kinda. I think they must have gone with a different publisher and different developer and it just went really bad. Um, but yeah, Premier Manager 09. Not a bad little game, but um, it's just like not the best. I will just like to mention, again, I've been playing my little tiny handheld 
and I've got my Dreamcast emulator working and I've been playing um, a game called Giant Killers and and it is one of those games where it is amazing I think I've just broken the game now um, yeah I think over oh, there Let's see if I can load it is it gonna load? nah um, oh there we go <clears throat> so it's got like your, your team as always like a management game has it's got your your tactics your 442 and then if you go to the uh, is it gonna say the next match just keep clicking buttons keep clicking buttons prepare for match I think that's yeah I'll play attacking playing Watford so I'm not going to have the, the sound on and it's going to be very hard to see so it's Newcastle v Watford and it's got like a teletext sort of like thing so at the on the actual screen itself it actually goes into detail so it says 1 minute or 4 Dyer sees Clark in space the pass is good but Wright does well to force Clark wide Somehow the Newcastle United player makes the cross. Heskey's running onto it. He heads it down under the keeper's body. Goal. Walker couldn't keep it out. Um, then 2 minutes 22. Watford restart the game with Noel Williams. 21 minutes 41. Heskey collects the ball on the halfway line and knocks it onto Carbone. He, he takes it past Bonnet. He's got Ferguson in space, the pass is good, and Ferguson's snapshot superb. Goal. What a brilliant strike. So at the moment I'm winning 2 0. So it's a game that it's very boring, but if you're not really bothered and not really interested, like you're watching something else, you can just press the button and start the game and it's you don't really need to concentrate on it. There's not that much happening and yeah it is just a simple sort of game i think it was dreamcast's only management like football management game uh, i think it was only released in europe and it's just not oh, it's just not a very good game so kick off for the second half i'm winning 2-1 at the minute so we'll go into the last thing and i, I just wanted to mention the walking dead daryl dixon and uh yeah it's not great but i will just like to say that i found it really interesting um going to another country another place where you can see how things have happened how things went i love the fact of starting it at the very beginning and then cutting 12 years later to when uh, daryl sort of came into the actual show God, this is annoying. There we go. I've done subs, um, <clears throat> and I just love the fact of seeing people as the outbreak first happened, how things went, and then cutting it back, and and then it keeps doing what I think is really good where it keeps cutting back five years ten years two years and explaining some of the stories some of the elements and it's really well done I love the fact that as I said they're not in um, France um, not in America anymore oh I won three one so I'll save this not in America they're in another country and it's just really really well done um, save that so yeah so you can like save the game as well and it's just a nice sort of system I, I love it I love the six button control layout I, I love that I mean like when you think about it that's perfect you can play all your Mega Drive Saturn games but also your first four buttons there they can just be used for your X square 
triangle sort of like PlayStation style buttons and then you've also got your two like your trigger buttons at the top so you, you can <coughs> play sort of like PlayStation style games no problem at all on it it's a really good game really good little thing so it's the Ambernek Arc so thanks to the wife for that for Christmas it was great um, but yeah Daryl Dixon I, I do think that this had a bigger budget or it seemed to have a bigger budget than the Dead World. Is it Dead World? The one we like that had Maggie and Negan in. Um, and I just think that the actors and the writing was just done better. So yeah, I'd recommend The Walking Dead, Daryl Dixon. I think it's going to be really fun. Season 2, it looks like Carol's coming back into it, so that'll be fun. Um, but yeah, so that's me, David. One of gaming of the games we've been playing this week from episode 384. So, thank you for watching. Goodbye. Hi, I'm Keith Allen, and I play Murphy on Z Nation, and I listen to One Up Gaming Podcast. Up next on the One Up Gaming Podcast is 10 minutes of nothing. Will it be the team talking about nothing or a guest interview? Stick around and find out now. It's 10 minutes of nothing, yeah, 10 minutes of nothing. David here, One Up Gaming, episode 384, and this is the 10 minutes of nothing. Um, so, I will just, um, where did I have the 10 minutes of, I'm sure I had like, uh, was it just in, still in this bit here? I'll be with you in a second. Here we go. Here we go. Load that up. Um, so. <clears throat> so if I just do that. And that. So there's the timer. Just so I know what's happening. So. the We're going to do the 10 minutes of nothing. Um... And this show, this time, so thanks to the, the guys um, of the team, we're going to do our most anticipated games of 2024. So there's about 30 games that have all chipped in and helped. So we've got 10 minutes to try and go through and talk about some of these games. So if I skip some, that's because I've only got 10 minutes to talk about them. So basically... So that means you've got like 30 seconds to talk about each game, give or take. So, we'll just go into this one and see. There uh, we go. <coughs> Jesus. Something fell. I don't know what it was. It scared me. <laughs> uh, do you know what? I'm going to move all this. Because I don't need to see myself. So, David here, One Up Gaming, episode 384, 10 minutes of nothing. The One Up Gaming's games we're most looking forward to for 2024. And we're not going to, this was done before the Xbox stuff. So there might not be, uh, like the Indiana Jones, there might not be other games that were revealed on that. So we'll just quickly go into this now. So starting now so first up we have destiny 2 the final shape and it looks as though this time I don't even know where it's begin. gonna end the light and darkness saga uh, I mean I'll admit I've not played a destiny game since I think it's on the 360 so it might have even been just the original destiny um, not my sort of game uh, yeah so Again, not one for me. I will say that I'm interested in the Earth Defense Force. I think it's Earth Defense Force 6? EDF 6? Yeah. Uh, it's just a complete stupid, really cheap budget, third person game, running around shooting massive monsters and stuff. So it's a fun little game. Um, Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth. I loved what they did in Final Fantasy 7 Remake, so this is carrying on the story, adding a lot of stuff, changing things around. Looks gorgeous, played amazingly well. 
and I will say that I am very interested to see how they get this sort of done and uh, get this sorted. Uh, next up, Hades 2. Now, Hades 2, I absolutely loved. And that's just, I should say Hades 1, I absolutely loved. Which is weird because I'm not a big fan of the Diablo style sort of games, but this one for some reason just clicked and it played and looked amazing. So I am very interested to see where they go with the story and their characters for Hades 2. Uh, Homeworld 3. Um, I will just say these are not in any order whatsoever. But I did remember playing Homeworld and maybe Homeworld 2 on my old PC back when I lived at my parents house. Oh God, it must be like 20 years ago now. Give or take. So I am absolutely so interested in Homeworld 3. I loved the originals. Proper space combat. Proper tactical knowledge known. It just looked amazing back in the day. So I'll, I'd love to see how this plays. Uh, next up. A game that's actually out now. So Like a Dragon infinite wealth I mean what do you need to know it is absolutely stunning to look at it plays amazing kind of like an RPG light um, it just yeah stories batshit crazy and it's just amazing great game um, a little nightmares 3 so this one is like a platform game 3d platformer um, and it's just a little bit creepy so it's got like the um, marionettes and little dolls and all that kind of stuff so it's a puzzle platformer more of a horror sort of side of things it's just a, the originals were nice little games I wouldn't say they were amazing but hopefully this one they've worked through some of the problems and it is just great so next up we have Lost Records Bloom and Rage now I don't really know much about this but I think it's like a um, like a oh god, don't nod. So the guys who do a, the point and click strategy sort of games from like Life is Strange and all those sort of stuff, they're back. And this is a, a female-led um, story. Follows four rockers. So it's like a, a band in the 1995 um, discovers that. Dark Secret, 20 years later, the gang's back, blah, 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 what happened in all those years. So it's a game that I think could be really good. I love these sort of story games. Um, oh, God, I, I actually looked at this, but I can't remember what it was now. Metaphor Refantianzo. I think it's a... a, a was it... Uh, Oh yeah, Shiryu's first ever full scale fantasy RPG. For some reason I thought it was a fighting game. But yeah, it's from the guys, uh, creative team behind Persona. So if you like Persona, it could be a really, really good little game. Uh, moving on, Pacific Drive. Again, it looks as though it's like another um, survival adventure. Uh, weird, simplistic, graphically... Um, it just looked really good. It's a, a narrative driven story and I love that kind of thing. <clears throat> uh, I don't know who put this on but Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. Um, I'm just sick of Nintendo re-releasing all of their old games. Make new ones. Um, if you're gonna do redos at least do like a Paper Mario collection and do like one, two, three, four or whatever on one pack. But you know what you're gonna do. Persona 3 Reloaded, or Reload, um, it's just like a game from 2006, so a turn-based PlayStation 2 RPG, it's getting the full-blown remake, uh, I'm not a big Persona fan, I'm not a big f a JRPG fan, another game that's out already, Prince of Persia The Lost Crown, amazing, great little game, hate it when they say like Metroidvania, because Castlevania wasn't like this until 2000, not 1998, kind of, and uh, Metroid was out, is uh, it 89 at that sort of time? So nearly 10 years before. So I just think it should be called like the Metroid style game. I don't know why they have to include two different games. It's just great. It's a 3D sort of graphic engine. With a 2D gameplay, so it can switch and swoop. It looked amazing. I love Prince of Persia. Really good game. Princess Peach Showtime. 
uh, again another 3D engine in a 2D space platformer where you can dress up as different characters, get different personas, different powers. I don't know how well it's going to be, but we'll see. Um, replaced a cyberpunk platformer. Oh god, it was announced in 2021. Uh, yeah, gorgeous pixel art, so that could be nice. I'm trying to get through with some of these now. Um, Rise of the Ronin. So, N Neo and Wulong Fallen Dynasty developers, Team Ninja, are looking to do the Elden what Elden Ring did for the Souls like uh, genre of his upcoming game, Rise of the Ronin. It'll be like, yeah, it's just, it'll look nice graphically. Uh, Senua Saga Hellblade 2 looks amazing, not going to go into it, but it looks absolutely stunningly amazing. Shadow of the Ninja Reborn. I think this is like a, it's like a redo of the old 16-bit. Uh, sort of like side-scrolling, platformery sort of thing. Mm, I don't know why it's on there. Skate Story looked amazing graphically, very neon, very dark. Skateboardy sort of like full 3D world looks good. Skull and Bones, yeah, I'm just gonna skip that because Skull and Bones, I'm just not exactly sure what the hell Skull and Bones is anymore. Um, <laughs> Stalker 2 looks absolutely stunning, I love Stalker, so Stalker 2 could be a great, great little game. This one I didn't even know was coming out, but Dark Forces, a Star Wars Dark Forces remaster. So again, it's done by the team who've done a load of remakes recently. Um, are they not going to say the name? Uh, no, they're not going to say the name. Not going to. Oh, Night Dive Studios. Um, they did the. I'm not going to go. There. It looks good. And then the next game, Star Wars Outlaws. It's the Ubisoft thing doing the Ubisoft thing. So that could be cool. Um. Another game that I think it's just out now, so Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. I love the premise, I love the idea. Um, I just don't know how well the execution is. We'll see. Um, Tales of Kenzera. I don't know who or what that was. I think it was like a 2D action platformer. So it looked nice. Um, yeah, we'll see how that sort of goes. Um, this one, I couldn't find the video for, but, and I couldn't find any screenshots, but Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Mutant Mayhem. So it's like the game that's built from the actual movie that came out last year. And I love Turtles, so I will love to see how this goes and how this works. Uh, another game that's just come out, which is stunning, and that is Tekken 8. I love the graphics. I think it's Unreal Engine 5. So it's like one of the better Unreal Engine 5 games. I love the story mode. It's just amazing. Uh, Vampire Masquerades Bloodlines 2. I didn't like the original one. So I will give this a go. I will see how this looks and how this plays. Visions of Mana. I'm not a big RPG fan. And this game looks like a bad Pokemon sort of graphics engine. So I'm not exactly massively looking forward to it. Then the last game on here is Zenless Zone Zero. And I mean what can I say? It's an RPG. Very cutesy. And ten minutes is up. So that is that. So yeah, what do you need to know? It's an RPG. Um and yeah, that is I mean, what else you need? That it is just an RPG. So that is the one-up game is ten minutes of nothing. So thank you all for watching. Me, David, one-up gaming. Please um, buy our album, Games Inspired Music. It's available now, um, and ten percent of each sale will go to the Child's Play charity. Um, and also our first one hundred podcasts are available from audiobooksontape.com. Just search One Up Gaming, and you'll be able to find our. Um, what can you find? Yeah, just search One Up Gaming. Find our cassette. It looks like a cassette, but it's a USB stick built within a cassette. 
and it's got our first 100 podcasts it's got some other bits and bobs on there it's got like 20 episodes of our OEG talks which was like a chat um, interview show with a lot of our interview guests from games and movies and things and um, yeah just go to our website oneupgaming.co.uk I am venturing into some other little things so more news soon I don't want to give too much away just yet but I've already designed a website uh, ready to go um, something completely different <coughs> You can go to our Etsy store where you can buy like hats like this and you can also get t-shirts and mugs and um, caps, jumpers, hoodies, all sorts from there. And I believe that'll do for episode 384. So me, David, one Gaming, and we'll be back next week. So thank you. Goodbye.
I say it better. I'm in it in no way. You know that it is meaning. Not gonna bow down. Breaking out the keys now. L G E. Yeah, that's how we do it. How we do it? Yeah, L G E. Contact. Better feel me. L G E.